You can also tell, I said this video is about retrieving, right? I haven't thrown it yet once. What we're doing right now is Everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone, and I have two 10 week old, count them, two 10 week old puppies. This is a little English cocker. His name is Patch, and this is Pocket, one of the German short hairs from our Mako Arlo litter. They're within a day or two of each other, and basically, they're working through similar things at this stage. I'm trying to keep them from playing right now. This is a big part of why we don't recommend raising litter mates or raising puppies together, which these guys are not. This puppy is going home with Autumn, and this puppy is going home with Isaac. Both of them doing a fantastic job raising them, and I'm helping to guide and develop along the way, and I thought it would be a great thing to show how we are going to work through the retrieving progression, okay? So, a couple different things that we're going to evaluate. First and foremost, we're going to try and build with each of them individually, and I'm going to show you what those look like, each puppy looks like, and then we'll work through whatever issues that we come across, okay? I'm going to go ahead and start with Patch. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention both of these puppies are following along with our step-by-step -step training courses available at standingstonesupply.com slash courses. He is in the Retriever Flusher course. She is in the Versatile Dog course. Both of them involve retrieving folks, and puppies of the same age typically are in a similar spot, but ultimately their brains work different and they train differently. So. We're gonna kind of show you what the differences look like today and how we work through them. One of the biggest things that we recommend with young puppies is controlled environments. This room is a fairly controlled environment, but it's still pretty big. It gives a lot of room for puppies to run around and do their thing. Um, and with retrieving specifically, what we want to develop from the beginning is good habits and good reps. I want the puppy to grab something, and its only option essentially is to run past me or near me or to me, okay? So when we start with puppies, he's actually been struggling just a little bit getting super distracted. We have to find a variety of different toys. I have a standard uh, Super Pro dummy. I have a winged flyer Super Pro dummy. I have a paint roller. The thing about paint rollers is they're soft on the outside, the puppies like to grab them, but they're extremely lightweight, okay? So this is, a, this is an, a bonus for us, the fact that it's really lightweight. I have a little squeaky toy. It does still, I think, have a, oh, it has a honker in it. Um, if that becomes a problem, we'll end up getting rid of that one or killing the squeaker honker in it, but this is soft and squishy and can be enticing to develop some tug or encourage the puppy to pick it up. And we have a rope toy. Last case scenario, we do have a ball. It's not a tennis ball, so I don't know that it will work great, but we have a ball, which changes the, the enticement category from the object because it bounces and rolls. Now, in our other retrieving videos, we don't recommend balls, but that's more for later in the process because they become, they are a fun thing to retrieve and they become so, I wanna say overused, that the dogs get overexcited, overstimulated, and then they start developing rolling and chewing and munching habits that cause bad bird dog mouth issues, okay? So we're going to start with trying to build engagement around one of these objects. I'm going to pick it, and then we will work through them to try and help Patch stay interested. Let's start straight away. Well, maybe you're gonna help pick it. I'll come back to this one if we need it. Ooh. Good choice. That one is a fan favorite. Let's go here. Now, I've got this corral set up, and that is going to be what helps him to only have one direction. If you don't have a corral, or uh, better yet, if you just have a hallway at home, this can be a really, really beneficial place to do this. All right, now, I wanna draw attention here to how I have set up myself. I'm on the edge of the wall. Normally people would set up like this, and when I'm on the edge here, this gives me the ability to snatch him, okay? But also gives him an opportunity to see an opening to try and shoot through. 
You can also tell, I said this video is about retrieving, right? I haven't thrown it yet once. What we're doing right now is playing, okay? He's playing tug, I'm building engagement with him, and this is fun. Puppies love this. We will work through some of the things that are developed around, we'll work through um, dropping later, but right now I wanna build excitement, I want this to be fun, I'm letting him fight a little bit, I'm pulling back a little bit, if he drops it, then he has to go work for it again. This is awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, kill, kill that little squeaker toy. All right. We're going to go ahead and give a toss. Oh, party foul. Oh, yeah. That's so much fun. That's a good grip. You, sir, are full of personality. There you go. Get it. 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 I'll throw it down there. Now he's got the opportunity to bring that back. Woo! I didn't grab him. I've got the toy. He's holding on to it. You can either grab him or the toy and just build this. Yeah. 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 This is fun. <laughs> And then settle him down. Good. Good boy. That's a really good grip. Okay. There you go. Play with your puppy. Okay. Throw another one. Gotcha again. You can see how well that's working. He thinks he's shooting the gap. What is he doing? He's coming right back to me. And this is a huge change from last week, okay? Switches flip with puppies and the development process. And what Autumn and I have actually been working on is we took away some of his extra toys over the last week. That's another tip. He dropped it. We're going to entice him again. And then we're going to go ahead, folks, and end this session. It's okay to hype the puppies up a little bit, get them excited. He wants this and then it disappears. That keeps him wanting more. We did count them. Two? Two retrieves in this, I'm checking here with the boss. Um, two retrieves in this session, and that's all the more that I'm gonna ultimately encourage that you do with young puppies. This will grow over time as he learns when we play fetch, and this will be our go-to from here on out. When he plays fetch, we're going to do short sessions. They're going to be really fun. He's going to want everything that is happening in that, and then the session ends. Let's go ahead and switch for pocket really quick. Okay, so same thing applies here. Now, she's been doing a really good job retrieving. My ultimate goal, and the reason why it's my ultimate goal, um, but my ultimate goal would be to retrieve with bumpers. The reason why is as we develop her, she's gonna have lots of opportunities to go through different levels of testing. This will involve things like marking drills, and you can't constantly throw ducks or you can't throw loofah toys or whatever those are called. Um, you can throw bumpers. And so if we can develop this with puppies, this would be where I would start. If your puppy doesn't like bumpers, that's when we get creative. So I'm going to tease her just the same way. If she wants to grab a hold of it, that's good. I've got a string on here. I can play just a smidge of tug with her too. There you go. Good, 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 good. There you go. Tease, tease, tease. And then we'll go ahead and make a toss. There you go, baby. She's got this wide open window. She says, no, I'm just gonna bring it straight back to you. Do a juke move and then shoot the gap. I don't know if she's been watching football or what, but that was pretty impressive. Um, a little tug here. Don't instantly take it from your puppy. Hold on to it, let them fight you. If it comes out of their mouth, just encourage them to continue to play. This is an important part of the, the, the development process from a retrieving standpoint, but also just a bonding standpoint with your puppy. You're playing with them, games that they enjoy. It's like, uh, it's no different than children. I think a lot of people have children, not everyone, but even if you have younger brothers and sisters or cousins or any of this thing, children like to kind of play children's games. It wouldn't be the same if you encourage them to, let's go do adult things. They go, meh. But if you play on their level, it, it resonates with them. They think you're cool. 
They bond with us if we play their games a little bit. Good. Good grips again. I'm just going to open her mouth. How I do that here is this back pocket. You can kind of just stick your finger in here and then pop their mouth open just enough to roll the bumper out. Tease, tease, tease. There you go. Good, 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 good. You can see different types of teasing. She tries to use her paws to hold on to it or to be able to pin it down. Throw another one to the end of the hallway. Good. A little distracted by her pile over there. Ooh, it came out. This is a great example. Don't let go of it or I'm going to lose it and then I've got to keep trying to get it. There you go. Throw another one. Good. There you go, puppy. Now, everything in moderation, folks. A lot of bird dog guys are cringing as they watch this, okay? But everything in moderation. We can develop a really strong hold and a good mouth this way. And then as the dog continues to progress, we'll finish retrieves like this. You play it a little tug and then we can do some petting. I've kind of moved her into a healing position. This will be an end goal. And we love on her, good. Calm her down, shh, good girl. And then just take the bumper from her, okay? That helps her to understand ultimately when there's a game to be played, we can play tug, we can have fun. This can be a fun thing. But at the end of that, if he goes to take it from me, it's over. The problem is people try and take it while the dog is out in front of them and they actively can still pull back. That starts the game again. They're thinking, oh yeah, we're just still playing tug. If you can stop them, position them to the point where you have a hold of their body and they can't continue to fight to continue the game of tug, then you can end the game of tug by just taking it from them and it's done, okay? So teaching a good release, that is important. That will come later. Right now, we're just showing her we can play tug together and we can end the game as the leader of the game itself. Folks, these are two 10-week-old puppies. Hey, Cocker, send him back over here. Hey, hey. That didn't work quite as planned. Hey, 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 hey. Patch. Here he comes. Here he comes. He spotted his red thing right there. <clears throat> okay. Oh, salute. Oh. Yeah, they just want to play and play and play. Um, two 10 week old puppies, folks. Different places in retrieving, but both have a lot of similarities. Completely even different breeds. The process is similar. Folks, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Patreon.com slash Standing Stone Kennels, where we can help guide you through the process. These guys are going to continue their retrieving. We'll keep you posted on how things are going. I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Pocket. This is Patch. We'll see you in their next videos.